Have you ever wanted to watch international satellite TV channels that aren't available on traditional cable or satellite services here in North America? Well, if you do, then what you're looking for is a free-to-air satellite system. What is a free-to-air satellite system? Well, it's basically a way of getting free digital satellite TV with a dish and a receiver and only a little bit more hardware than you would require with a traditional DBS satellite system. And in today's episode of Tech Report, I'm going to show you how to set up an FTA satellite TV system. So a free-to-air satellite TV system consists of a number of components. First off, there's the dish. Now this is probably the most visible component of the system, and it can come in one of two types. There are C-band dishes, and these are designed to receive the lower frequencies that were used um, in earlier times. There is still a lot of programming up on C-band, however it requires a 5-foot or larger dish, so many residential neighborhoods wouldn't approve of you putting up a huge mucky dish in your backyard. As I said, there is a lot of programming on C-band, but you don't, most of it is uh, switching over to a newer system called KU-band. And what that requires is a 33 to about a 40-inch dish, depending on what satellites you're trying to pick up. And that's only a little bit bigger than the dish that you would get from, say, Dish Network or Bell Express View. This dish can mount on the side of your house, and it can be fairly inconspicuous. So once you've decided the type of dish that's appropriate for you and your programming needs, it's time to mount it to your house and figure out how to aim the damn thing. Alright, so this is my primary dish. It's a 90-centimeter uh, KU band dish. It's got a skewable LNVF and it's made by Fortix Star. Now, it's a pretty good dish. It works to pull in just about every satellite that's in range of North America, or at least every satellite that operates on KU band. Alright, so the first concern you're going to have after purchasing your dish is where to mount it. Now, there are a few good mounting locations on a house. Ideally, you want something that's a little bit sheltered from wind and rain, especially if you've got a larger dish. And obviously the most important thing is to have it facing the location that your satellite is in the sky. So you're going to want to walk around your backyard with a compass uh, to make sure your mounting location is facing where you want to go. So if you come around back here, I'm going to show you how I've set it up with the bolts and attached it to the wall. So as you can see here, you've got the main support arm, which holds onto the dish, and then that's got extra supports, two of them, which also bolt into the wall. Now you just use, most dishes new, they'll come with bolts similar to these, and uh, they're really nice and secure bolts. Uh, if you've got, um, uh, you've got a good drill, you can just fire them right into the wall of your house. And it's the same thing at the bottom here. The uh, same type of bolts, they just fire right into the bottom of your house. And the thing you want to make sure of, though, when you're setting up uh, the satellite dish is that everything is plumb. You want to make, bring a level up with you to make sure everything is nice and flat. Because if it's not flat, you might be screwing up uh, your aiming of the satellites when you're getting to that point later on. So once you get the dish mounted to the wall of your house, or wherever you're going to mount it, the second thing you've got to figure out is where you're aiming it, and what satellite you're aiming it for. So, if you go onto the internet, there's going to be a lot of websites that'll give you uh, a bunch of different look angles for aiming it for your specific satellite. I'm not going to go through that because if you Google enough, you'll figure it out. But I am going to talk about the three main angles that you've got to worry about when setting up a satellite system. So the first angle I'm going to talk about is the elevation angle. Now what the elevation angle is, is it's how high the dish has to look up in the sky to pick up the satellite. Obviously some satellites are going to be closer to you, so you're going to have to aim your dish higher, and some are going to be further away, so you're going to aim your dish at less of an angle. Now, your elevation angle markers are on your dish, so if you follow me to the back, uh, you should see that right here, you've got different numbers. Now, these, all these numbers indicate different elevation angles. I've got mine set in the 30s right now. Now, if you go onto the internet and find one of those satellite angle calculators I mentioned earlier, it'll give you an elevation angle. And what you do is you just look at the numbers on your dish and line it up so that your uh, you're locked into the corresponding number that you're supposed to be on. So the second angle I'm going to mention is called the azimuth angle. And what the azimuth angle is, is it's what direction the satellite has to look in. 
So there'll be there are bolts at the back of your dish that you can loosen, and that allows you to turn the dish either left or right to aim it for a particular satellite. Again, you can use a compass to get a generic bearing and then have somebody at the receiver watching the signal strength while somebody else up on the roof fine-tuning it, making sure you're aimed in exactly the right spot. The last angle, and it's of significantly less importance with single dish system, is called the skew. Now what the skew is, is basically just indicating the direction that the LNB is turned. You see I can flip it, turn it back and forth, clockwise and counterclockwise. And that's usually just used for fine-tuning satellites. Once you get the strongest possible signal by adjusting the elevation in the azimuth, you can turn your LNB back and forth a bit and see what will help you bring in the strongest picture. It's not something you need to worry about, however it can help improve the signal strength on your satellite TV system. So the second part of your free-to-air system is the coaxial cable. Now basically what that is, is it's a standard cable TV cable, but a bit higher quality. You want to put connectors on either end, and then feed it through the mast assembly on your dish and plug it into your LNBF. On the other end it goes into your receiver. Pretty basic, but there's a few things you want to keep in mind. First of all, you want to make sure you're using high quality coaxial cable. You want to use a high grade like RG6 or above because anything less won't allow effective signal transfer of the satellite signals and it won't pass power to the LNBF. Secondly, you want to make your cable run as short as possible because longer cable runs mean you'll have more signal loss and more signal loss means you may lose satellite reception during inclement or cloudy weather. Basically, when running out your cable you want to make sure you're using common sense. Use high quality cable, make the run as discreet and as short as possible. So the last thing that uh, you're going to be setting up in a basic free-to-air installation is the receiver. Now the receiver is what takes the uh, digital video signals from the satellite and converts them into signals that the television can read. Now this is what my receiver is, it's a Fordic Star Mercury 2. Uh, most of them are about this size, um, a bit smaller than uh, an older VCR, but still definitely not that big. Uh, here you can see it in comparison to a Bell Express View DBS receiver. Now the receiver is what you're going to be interacting with on a daily basis, so you want to make sure you're reading the instruction manual and you know everything that you can do with it. Um, when you're first setting up your satellite system, you're going to want to go into the menu and go into something called antenna setup. It differs from receiver to receiver, and what that does is it brings up a menu like this. It shows you the signal strength, which is particularly important when you're aiming your dish for the first time. You want to make sure you get as strong of a signal as possible. And then it also lets you uh, select what satellite you're aiming for, uh, what LNB type you've got, and it's also got options for setting up uh, satellite switches or actuators, all that kind of fun stuff. Now the receiver, uh, basic operations anyway, is pretty much uh, like any standard DBS receiver. Uh, you've got channel up, channel down, um, you've got a number pad where you can enter in specific channel numbers. Now the first thing you want to do once you've acquired your satellite signal is you're going to want to do something called a blind scan. And uh, that's accessed from your antenna setup menu, it's uh, right down here, scan FTA channels. And what that does is it um, gets the receiver to go out on the satellite and it searches through all the transponders and it makes a list of every single channel that's available on that satellite and then it puts them into a list for you. And then once you've got that list, you can... Uh, configure favorites lists, you can rearrange your channel number, do whatever you want really. So that's how you set up a basic free-to-air system. There's lots of things you can do with it, lots of channels that are available to you. Um, the sky's the limit really, and the pun was not intended there. When we're talking about costs, uh, you're going to be looking at about $200, two to $300 for your basic um, second-hand free-to-air setup, and that can go all the way up to $1,000 or over for one of the really high-end, high-definition free-to-air systems. When purchasing a free-to-air television system, you want to make sure you're getting something that's suited to your needs. That obviously goes without saying. You don't want to get something really fancy if you're not going to be using it uh, very often. So there you go, folks. If you've got any questions, don't hesitate to email me at inet.co.nr at gmail.com. Leave comments on my YouTube page or on this video. I'll do my best to get back to you and answer any questions that you might have.